So what's analysis of variance? So this is, aims to test if your groups uh, differ more than expected by chance. A simple way of expressing the overall ANOVA model, or this simple ANOVA model that we're thinking about, would be like this. So you've got a measurement that you want to compare between the groups, which we'll call the outcome measurement. And we can say, well, that outcome is equal to the mean for the group, and then there'll be an error about that mean. Of course, not all the individual values are equal to the mean. They're going to be greater or less than it. So that is the error, it's sometimes also called a residual, what's left over, that means. And another way you might express that is uh, this outcome. Um, you, you might put it in this form. So you've got a value, y, on the ith observation in the jth group, this g j is the group mean for group j, and then you've got an error term for that i observation in group j. Just to help you imagine this, uh, this might be something you're trying to analyse. Um, it's a, a set of data that measures expression of various different genes, and you might decide you want to see if that expression's different between, here we've got five different genes, so the gene would then be the group, and this g, j would be the mean of each of these three values. But of course, they're not all going to be quite equal to the mean, um, so there's going to be an error added on to that. Another way of um, expressing, or sometimes people talk about it as parameterizing the model, is in, is in this form, which is almost the same as what we had up here except instead of giving the group mean, it gives an overall mean for the data plus the difference dj of the group mean from that overall mean. So it's exactly the same, except it has this overall mean in the model too, and the parameters that are going to come out of it are going to be slightly different, but that won't affect the p-value that we get eventually. So this is quite a simple version of analysis of variance. Uh, sometimes called one-way analysis of variance because we're only comparing between one set of groups and we'll look next time at what happens if we've got the data grouped in more than one way and we can use two, two-way or even three-way ANOVA. So if we look at this um, gene expression data again, so our null hypothesis would be that the groups have all got the same expression levels and if we do an analysis of variance on that, it turns out that we get a p-value for that null hypothesis is quite small. It's less than 0 0.001 this time, not quite as significant as, as it might be, but it's still highly significant. So we can reject that hypothesis that there's no difference between the gene expressions, between the, in the expression between the genes. To get a feel for the kind of output you get from ANOVA, when ANOVA was done by hand, it was necessary to do a load of calculations and get out a table, something like this, but I'm not even going to begin to explain this table. If you're sort of mathematically minded, you can read up about how you get these numbers, but they're basically used to, to get you to your p-value, to do the statistical test. And here, instead of a t-statistic, we've got something that's become known as an f-statistic, and basically the higher values of f and that there'll be a distribution for this F statistic. The higher the value of the F statistic, then the smaller the probability that the null hypothesis is true. So we've got an, a very large F statistic, which is huge compared to the F distribution, and we get a highly significant P value. But I don't think for the sort of, you know, unless you're interested, you really need to understand much about this F distribution other than that this is a statistic that's used to test the hypothesis that all the groups are the same, and in this case, the genes. And it's this p-value that you're really after. And as long as you understand what that p-value is telling you, which is you can, it's the probability that the groups are the same, it allows you to conclude that they're different if it's very small. The next bit you don't really need to understand properly, but just in case you're interested, we saw that the T distribution has de degrees of freedom, and you see that pop up in the statistical output. The F distribution actually has two degrees of freedom that relate to these numbers in the table, 
and that's going to define the shape of the distribution. But I don't think it's essential to understand that here, where these, where these come from. But basically, it will get an appropriate shape of the null distribution that suits the size of your data set. We found that the genes were, st these, these are the gene names, they were statistically different. We, we disproved the hypothesis that they were all the same. But we would want to go on and find out, well, which of them are different from each other? And most packages will optionally allow you to carry out t-tests to compare pairs of groups within the analysis of variants. And as I said, by default, they use a pooled standard deviation or variance for all the groups. And quite often, it's more reliable, particularly, you know, we've only got three values per group. You w wouldn't really want to get standard deviation from just three values. So um, the packages handle this all in a different way. Minitab has this sort of quite a neat way of saying which groups are statistically significantly different from each other by giving them each uh, a letter. And it says if the two groups do not share a letter, then they're statistically significantly different. So if we compare the first two groups, the first group's got a letter A, the second gene, sorry, has got an A, B. So they share the letter A, so they're not different from each other. But then when we compare the first group to the third group, they don't share a letter, They've, there's an A and a B. So the first group and the third group are significantly different from each other, and the first group and the fourth group, the fifth group, the sixth group. Uh, but so you can see from this simple display which groups are significantly different from each other. But other packages will express this in a different way. So this is just something that Minitab does. It's important to be sure that uh, your ANOVA assumptions are met. And what you're assuming when you do an analysis of variance is that the, the residuals or the errors are normally distributed. And that effectively means, just as with the t-test, that the data are normally distributed within their groups. And you also assume, because ANOVA is that taking the same standard deviation for each group, that the groups have the same variability. This slide was just about calculating those residuals, reminding you what is meant by the residual. It's what's left over on top of the group mean for each observation. So you can get it simply by taking the outcome minus the group mean to get the residuals. So for example, our first observation was 4,746. And if we take off the, its mean for that particular gene group, of 4,092, we get a residual of minus 46. And we do that for all the observations. And it's those error terms in the model, these residuals, that are assumed to be normally distributed. A simple way to check that, um, just as we did for the t-test, is to do a histogram of the residuals. So this histogram isn't too bad. I mean, you've got to bear in mind the small frequencies, and so don't get too alarmed by this two here. I think I'd probably accept that histogram was good enough. Another way to check is to use something called a residual plot. And the residual plot is a plot of the residual values on the y-axis against their fitted values, the fitted values by the model. So here, that's going to be the group means. And what you want to see is a fairly even distribution over the range of fitted values. It's a bit hard to tell here because we've only got three observations per treatment. But there was nothing in this plot that I found too alarming. There weren't, wasn't a sort of a strong kind of line going upwards or a, a, a very, there's a bit of funneling in, but it wasn't clear cut. And the other thing this plot will show you is if there's any outliers in the data. If we'd got a value up here, w that would be an outlier, and we'd then want to investigate that a bit more. So, yeah, important, just as with the t-test, you've got normal data, um, important in ANOVA, but your residuals are normally distributed.